Hello, and welcome to the class for the FOF Performance 5.0. We've been very excited about this machine since it recently came out. Um, we've already completely sold out in our store. Fantastic machine. You'll notice if you've seen other of my videos, they're a little bit on the lengthy side. They're fairly long videos because we go, um, we go pretty in depth into the machine. So I'm gonna start by pointing out some of the obvious features on the Performance 5.0. Things that are obvious is that it's a very long machine. So it is a long arm, has uh, 10 inches from the needle to the inside of the machine. Um, it's well lit. You have uh, banks of LED lighting above the arm and also over in the needle area. Uh, obvious, other obvious features, um, automatic needle threader, um, Foff's special built-in walking foot that is integrated into the machine. Let me turn the camera a little bit so you can see. This is the upper feed system. Um, that's why a lot of people prefer Foff because they feed so beautifully, having a set of feed teeth that works on the top of the fabric. Other, uh, other obvious features, tons of stitches on the machine, as you can see laid out. Uh, more stitches than you can ever possibly want, along with Omnimotion stitches, which are stitches that are very large because the fabric feeds both left to right and front to back at the same time. And we'll play with those shortly. Um, some other features that maybe aren't so obvious, no pressure foot lift to lever, the foot works completely automatic. Um, automatic thread cutter, bobbin low sensor, a very nice interactive touchscreen on the model. Um, really nice, well thought out machine. So let's uh, let's now start um, by kind of getting into the machine a little bit more. I'd like to show you just how easy this machine is to thread. And there's some great features with this machine. I really like the way the bobbins work. Uh, Foff has special bobbins that will only fit in the machine the proper way. You cannot put this bobbin in upside down. You can also only put it on the bobbin winder the proper way. It only goes on the right way. If you try to put it on upside down, it simply won't go on. Also, if you try to put it in the bobbin case upside down, it just simply won't fit. So they're really great bobbins. Um, if you were to wind your bobbin, it's simple. Spool a thread on the spool pen. You have a little button guide right on the top of the machine. You just bring it around. There's two metal guides that stretch over to the bobbin winder. Push it over, hit the foot control or hit the start button and your bobbin winds. Uh, bobbin winding is very simple. So let's go ahead and show you how the actual threading of the machine goes. So you'll notice you have a spool pin that will work either in the horizontal position or in the vertical position. Now most machines have you um, use it in the horizontal position. The reason why is the thread just falls off the end of the spool and the spool of thread does not have to rotate. Now there's times when you're working with a difficult thread that you may decide to stand it up. When you do, just take off your top spool cap, make sure you have your bottom spool cap and your felt pad there for the spool to sit on and then it'll just pull off like that. But we're going to put our spool cap on the end, lay our spool down. We have a first metal thread guide that the thread just pulls under. The little button guide here goes behind that. Straight down the front of the machine, back up. When you get to this up part, there's a lever in there called the take-up lever. Make sure you see the thread click to the front of that lever. And then back down to a little wire guide right on the needle clamp. And then I will show you how to use the needle threader. Okay, to use the needle threader, you just hold the thread off to the side. The first little uh, metal hook will grab the thread, push the needle threader all the way down, which will stick a little wire through the eye of the needle. Stick your thread in the little forked finger, and it'll pull a loop, and you just drag it through the rest of the way. Uh, needle threader is easy, but needle threaders uh, on all sewing machines are, are fragile, so you have to handle them properly, otherwise you'll bend that wire. Uh, but it's an easy needle threader to work with. Um, to put the bobbin in, once you've wound your bobbin, you can take off your bobbin cover, and then you can insert your bobbin into the bobbin case. Now again, the bobbin will only fit in the proper way. Um, you'll see the FOF uh, sign facing up, and that's, that's the direction that it goes in. If you try to put it in upside down, it's not going to fit. Take your thread, drop your bobbin in. I like to put one finger on the bobbin so that I can pull the bobbin thread tightly. There's a little metal catch at the base of the bobbin case. You just pull it until it clicks in. Then you bring it around to the first little guide there, down to where the razor blade is. 
Uh, when you get to the razor blade, it'll cut off your thread. Put the cover on. Now, you do not turn the hand wheel like you would on an old machine. Do not do that. You just put the fabric in and simply start sewing, and it'll grab the bobbin thread on the very first stitch. The accessory box, which holds all the feet and accessories, does have two sides to it. Um, you have the back, where you're going to find your buttonholer back there. Uh, it's common for someone to say, I didn't have get a buttonholer, and it's because they didn't realize there's a back section to their accessory box. Also, there's the front section where you're going to keep all of your feet, bobbins, everything. It's great bobbin holder. It's rubber, so it doesn't matter if you're using pre-wound bobbins. It's going to hold the tail and keep those thread tails um, nice and neat in there. When you lift out this section, you'll find another compartment where you can keep some larger accessories under there also. Okay, I'm going to run through what we can see on the front of the machine because we have some buttons and then we have our touchscreen. Uh, this touchscreen is actually it's, it's awesome. It's much nicer than some touchscreens in the past. It's very responsive. Um, it has a high definition to it. It almost feels like it's an iPhone kind of sideways. It can even has that look to it. But the screen is that responsive. I mean, it's really nice. Um, right here, we have our reverse button. Um, it's kind of the, what you think. You hold the button down when you're sewing and it'll stitch in reverse. Now, if you hold the reverse button down when you're not sewing, the light will turn on, which means you've permanently set the machine to sew in reverse until you hit the button again, and then it'll take it out of reverse. So when you're sewing and you hit the button, instantly reverses. As soon as you let it go, it comes back forward. But when you're not sewing and you hold it down, it turns it on to be a permanent reverse. The button above that, where it has uh, the play and stop symbol, like you would see on a CD player, that is run and stop. That is how you can sew without your foot control. Anytime you hit that button, it'll start the machine sewing. Now, one thing I want to point out is that Fuff does their start-stop button a little different than other machines, uh, and I really appreciate this, is on other machines, other brands, you have to unplug your foot control before you can use the start-stop button. On Fuff, you have your foot control plugged in. You can still use the start-stop button. But one thing I really love is that if you use the start button and the machine starts sewing, as soon as you hit the foot control, the foot control instantly takes back over. So it's, it's a great, well-thought-out uh, start-stop button. Um, above that, you have your presser foot lifter buttons. So down, um, you have up, extra high. The way that the, the lifter buttons work here is each button has two touches to it. So let me angle this down a little bit so you can see the presser foot. And I'll just put a piece of fabric under there. So when I hit my needle down button, the foot goes down against the fabric like you think it would. Um, when you hit it again, the foot just barely hovers above the fabric. This is so that you can put your needle right where you want to start sewing. When you get your needle in the position you want to start sewing, you hit the foot control and the presser foot drops down the rest of the way. So again, when you hit the down button a second time, it barely hovers and you hit the foot control, it drops down and you can start sewing. This is where you used to raise and lower the lifter lever to get the needle where you want to start sewing. They've thought it through. It's, it's hands-free sewing. It's wonderful. Now, let me hit my scissor button real quick, get the fabric out of here. So you have your up button, so this button raises the foot up. Now, if you hit the up button a second time, you'll hear an extra little click. The foot goes to a much higher position, but also the feed teeth disengaged automatically, so it turned off the feed teeth. The reason why it did this is because when you put it into the extra high position, you're trying to get a fat, bulky piece of fabric underneath there. Um, it turns off the feed teeth so that it doesn't hang up on the feed teeth when you try to get the bulk under there. And then what happens is, as soon as you hit the foot control, the feed teeth instantly re-engage. Doesn't miss a stitch, just instantly comes back on. So that's how the presser foot up and down buttons work. One thing I can tell you too is you'll notice I've been using the automatic thread cutter buttons. Anytime I use the automatic thread cutter button, after it cuts, the foot raises automatically. And also I want to point out, doesn't matter what position the foot's in, any time I hit the foot control, the foot drops down and starts sewing. So you do not have to use that down button. Anytime you hit the foot control, it, it, it drops right back down. Okay, so the scissor button, we talked about that. Um, 
above the scissor button is uh, our fixed stitch button. That is where if you're sewing and you want it to make a knot for you automatically, you can just hit this button and it'll automatically lock for you. Now one thing I want to point out too is that if you use the scissor button as the needle is still moving, so as you're sewing, it'll then lock before it cuts. So if I start sewing, I hit my scissor button, it's going to lock the stitch and then it's going to cut. If I start sewing and then I stop and hit the cutter button, it's not going to lock, it's just going to instantly cut. So there's two different ways that scissor button works. So again, this is a fix button or a locking stitch button. The button above it is a pattern restart button. So if you're doing a, like a name and you wanted to get to the beginning of that name again, you can hit this. It takes you right back to the beginning of any stitch you're on. Now the funny looking button next to it, um, it's kind of an odd symbol. Uh, it is Foff's speed control symbol. They've used that symbol for many, many years. Um, when you hit the button, it limits the speed of the machine. So now these machines sew very, very fast, uh, faster than most machines in the industry. So when you hit that button, it turns the speed down. Or if you're using the start stop button, that'll limit the speed too. So if the machine doesn't go racing off on you. Now you'll notice in the corner of the speed control button is a little triangle, meaning that there's a hidden menu if you hold the button down. Anytime you see that on, on a FOF, a little triangle in the corner, it means there's a whole nother menu back there. So if you hold the button down on the screen, it will pop up your little slider menu and then you can adjust the speed to put it wherever you want it to be. So if you wanted it much slower, maybe at the slowest speed you can set it, um, then it's on the slowest speed. And then when you hit the button again, it turns it off. And you'll always see it come on the screen to know you have it on or off. Okay, the button below that, needle up down position. So on your FOF, when you stop sewing, it always stops with the needle up. Um, but you have the option of always stopping with needle down. Now the great thing with FOF, because of the automatic foot system, is when I'm stopping needle down, the foot's automatically gonna raise to pivot. Does it completely on its own. It's an awesome feature. This is great for a lot of things, turning corners. Also, if you're a chain piecer, you can sew up like this, slide your next piece under, hit your foot control, and off you're running again. It's wonderful. So that's the needle up down button. Another thing I want to point out about needle up down on your FOF is when you do not have the button selected, so the light's not on, we, we are just sewing normal, so the needle is stopping in the up position, you have a foot tap feature. So anytime you tap the foot control when you're sewing, it'll automatically put the needle in the fabric and raise the foot for you to turn. All done simply by tapping your foot control. See that? I use the foot tap feature more than I use the button feature because a lot of times I just need to turn a quick corner. Okay, so that's the physical buttons on the front. Now we have the whole interactive touch screen here. Um, so we're gonna go through this because there's, there's a good amount to it. It's very simple. Um, it's set up really well, but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer here so we can get um, a really tight shot on this screen. Okay, so let me explain a little bit about the screen and what you're seeing. We have our stitch here. Um, so let me actually just go and grab a different stitch um, that's not a straight stitch, maybe something with a little bit of a pattern to it so you can see, um, so you can see a little bit better on the screen. So you can see our stitch here on the screen. This is the actual size that it stitches. So between these two dotted lines is nine millimeters. This machine is a nine millimeter stitch width machine, meaning that it does very wide stitches, the industry widest stitch width. Um, so everything that you see on the screen is the actual size you get when you sew on your fabric. Next to it, we have our zigzag width. So when we change our width, it actually changes on the screen to show us what we're gonna get. Next to that, we have our stitch length button. So if we lengthen our stitch, you'll see it actually change on the screen to, again, show you exactly what you're gonna get when you sew on your fabric. So you've got zigzag width and you've got stitch length. Next to that, 
uh, is your tension settings. Now the machine has fully electronic tensions, so it's setting the tension all the time based on what you're doing. Now if you wanted to change the default, maybe due to your thread or whatever you have in the machine, you can change it right on the screen. Now anytime you change the default, meaning that's where the stitch goes to when you select it, um, the numbers will change color, just to let you know that you've changed from the default stitch. Now up here, it always tells you the recommended foot to use. For this particular lightning bolt type of satin stitch we're doing, um, it's recommending the 2A foot. It's recommending because this is normally a satin stitch, it's telling you you could use a little bit of uh, stabilizer if you wanted to. Now the funny looking button next to it here, uh, that is our free motion button, which we'll do a in a little while. Um, it's how we free motion. We just select the button and then it raises the foot automatically, drops the feed dogs, does everything we need to instantly free motion. It's great. Um, the little numbers down here, 1.1.7, 1 .1 that tells us what stitch we're on. We're in menu one, category one, stitch seven. So it kind of lets you know where you're at. Now, um, over here on the side, uh, we have, and, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you right now, kind of just quickly going through the screen, but we're going to actually play with some of this stuff so you'll get a little bit of, of a better understanding. But right now, I'm just giving you a quick overview. Um, right here, we have our file folder. It means that we can save this to our personal menu. Any stitch that we've changed, altered, tweaked in any way, we can just throw it in that folder real quick, um, and then we can get back to it anytime that we want down the road. The one below it is automatic locking stitch, so we can turn on beginning lock and lock, have it automatically cut for us, which we're going to do in a second, so don't worry. Um, below that, um, tapering stitches, patchwork stitching, meaning that it remembers what we do and it'll repeat it. Real easy, and I'll, sh I'll show you that too, so don't, don't worry that I'm not explaining these very well. Um, we have our programming screen, how we put stitches together, and we have Stitch Creator, which is really fun. It's how we make our own personal stitches. Um, over here, we have mirror imaging, meaning that it'll flip-flop the stitch, this direction. The one below it means it flip-flops the other direction. So mirror imaging in both ways. Uh, trash can here, um, if we're doing programming, it won't do anything on this screen. But if we're writing a name or something, it's how we can delete if we made a mistake or if we just want to delete one character. It's how it would be done at the little trash can symbol. Um, over on this side, we have, we're going to start at the bottom here. We have a question mark. One of the best features they've ever put in a sewing machine. It's awesome. Um, what this does is it answers questions for you because sometimes you look at your screen and you don't know what a, a symbol is, what a button does. So if you touch your help and you touch anything on the screen, it's going to tell you exactly what that does. The help button is great. I mean, it, it, it makes it so that you're not opening your instruction book. If you, if you have a question, you don't have to go search through your book. You can, you can pretty much figure it out just by using that help button. Uh, help button is great. I can't emphasize that enough. It's awesome. Okay, above that we have our tools. It's where all of the settings for the machine um, lives. So anything we need to change, uh, we'll take a second to go through that a little bit more. But um, Touchscreen adjust, uh, software version, all those things, you'll find it all in, in the tools. Now, the one that looks like all these little menus, that's what they are. There are menus. They're where we find all of our stitches live in this one little button. So when we touch this button, we pop up with, with stitches. It, it brings us to our standard menu of stitches, which is kind of our utility menu of stitches. Then if we touch this here, we're going to get into where all of our categories are. This is our quilting stitches. You can see it says quilting stitches. We can go then to maybe uh, built-in stippling stitches, um, or we can go to hand-looking stitches, crazy pass stitches. Um, and, you know, decorative stitches, needle art stitches, maxi stitches, which are those really big ones, which I'll show you. They're a lot of fun. Um, sewing techniques and um, your, some of your personal menus are right there in the heart. So this is where all of the many hundreds and hundreds of stitches in your machine, you can get to them all in these little categories. The reason why they broke them up into, um, into menus 
r rather than having you just scroll through this massive amount of stitches is because the machine has so many stitches. So they simplified it by putting them into categories so you can easily get to the stitch that you want without having just to page through all of these different stitches. So all of your stitches live right there. Um, below that, if you toggle down on the side, you have all the different alphabets that the machine does. And then you have your personal files here. If you've stuck any stitches in there, you'll find them also in there. So that's a, a very quick rundown of how the, the touchscreen works. And now we're going to get into doing a little bit of sewing using some of the features of the screen. Okay, so now it's time to play a little bit. Uh, this is where things get fun. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is I want to play with our automatic locking features because this is a great feature that FOF has. They have one of the best ways uh, and simplest ways to automatically lock your stitch. We have a button here um, that has a symbol of a beginning lock, end lock, and thread snips. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button and I'm going to tell the machine I want it to lock the beginning of my stitch. I want it to lock the end of my stitch. And just to show off what all three um, buttons does, I'm going to tell it to automatically cut for me. So what's going to happen is it's going to lock the beginning automatically. It's going to lock the end automatically. It's going to cut, raise the foot, all done completely on its own. So when I start sewing, the first thing that happens is the fabric, the stitch locks. When I get to the end of my seam and I'm ready to finish, I just touch my reverse button one time. It's going to lock the end. It's going to cut. It's going to raise the foot. Completely automatic. So you can see it locked the beginning and it locked the end. Now, when I start sewing again, it knows I'm back at the beginning of my stitch and so it's automatically going to lock the beginning. Now I can stop as many times as I want. It's not going to finish my end lock until I tell it to by touching the reverse button and then it locks the end. Yeah, great automatic locking stitch. Um, while we have that on, I'm going to skip down here to our pattern sewing icon because I want to show you how you can have the machine remembered remember what you sew and repeat it as many times as you want. And it's simple. I just touch this one icon here. Now I start sewing and again I still have my locks turned on so I'm going to have it locked the beginning. I'm going to have it locked the end. I'm going to go ahead and touch this button. Okay, so you can see the length that I just sewed. It has now remembered what I have sewn and it'll repeat it as much as I want. So now it's like I'm in business. I'm in production. I need to make 50 of these. All I have to do now is hit my foot control. I don't have to do anything else. And you can see how fast this machine is. It's very fast. And you can do this all day long. And you can do this with any sequence of stitches. I mean, I'm just doing it with a straight stitch, but we can have it remember whatever we sewed. Um, and again, it, it's really easy to have it remember what you sew and have it repeat. You just touch this icon right there. And if you forget what the icon is, just use your question mark start touching icons, patchwork program, touch the activate patchwork program um, where it'll remember what you sewed. Okay, so that's the automatic locking stitch. Um, I showed you patchwork. So now let's play a little bit more. Um, there's, a, there's one really fun thing that the machine does, which I, I like. It's the mitered corners or the taper stitches. And it's done in this same menu here where we found patchwork. So we're going to turn on our tapers. Now we're on a straight stitch. Can't taper a straight stitch. There's nothing there to taper. But you can taper any of the other stitches that the machine does. So let's go find an appropriate stitch um, to taper. Uh, the stitch that I like is in menu 2. So I'm going to go to our stitches. We're going to go to menu 2. 
We're going to go to our crazy patch stitches here. And I picked pick stitch number 11 because it's a really wide honeycomb stitch. It's really uniform. And when I show off this tapering feature, you can really see just what's going on. So on the screen, I'm going to touch the beginning taper and the end taper. And you can see what happens on the screen. Basically, right now we're doing a mitered corner. So I'm gonna start sewing. It'll automatically start with my beginning taper. And I'll sew about an inch or so. I'm gonna go ahead and touch my reverse button. And that tells it that I'm ready to finish with the end taper. and I get a nice end taper. So now what I'm gonna do is I left my, um, my locking stitch on, so I'm actually gonna turn those off and I'm going to show you, um, I'm gonna show you the taper because I actually wanna turn, uh, turn a corner. So let's start sewing again. And again, it's going to do my beginning taper. When I'm ready to do my end taper, touch my reverse button. Okay, now I'm gonna put a needle down. Just gonna put the needle down, raise the foot up. I'm gonna turn this corner, I'm gonna turn uh, 90 degrees, and I'll start sewing again. And now when I'm ready to finish, I'm just gonna touch my reverse and have it reverse. Now if I wanted it to remember my first pattern, I could have used it with my patchwork and then I could have made my first side and then it would have repeated the other side to be the same length. Um, but you'll see there, see how I got a mitered corner by doing that? Needle down, just pivot it, it's great. Um, okay, so that is the 45 degree tapers. Now remember when I said that anytime you see a little triangle on the corner of a button, that means there's a hidden menu back there. So if I hold down my top taper, uh, a taper menu will pop up. I have all different choices. So I'm gonna pick the 60 degree center justification for the beginning. I'm gonna do the same thing for the end taper. So now you'll see it's a little different there on the screen and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, when we're ready to finish our taper, that's my reverse. There you go. There's my other taper stitch. Yeah, very easy, uh, but a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you something else too. So let's go ahead and turn off our tapers. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go just um, pick a stitch that has some sort of a pattern to it. Uh, maybe like a little heart or, or an elephant. Let's pick, you know what, it's a lot of fun. Um, I kinda like the turtle, we'll pick a turtle. So you see a little turtle. If we go back to the same um, icon, that is where our tapers and our patchwork is, um, you also have a single stitch or a single pattern button. So if I touch this button, you'll notice I got one turtle on the screen now. It took away the other turtles. But you'll also notice the plus and minus has times one. So now I can say, okay, I just want two turtles or I just want to do three turtles. And that's all it'll do. It'll just do those three and it'll stop. Um, so it's, it's easy to kind of figure out what, uh, what you got going on, because it shows you on the screen too, so it's really easy. Um, so that is single stitch there. Okay, so let's use the program feature now. Uh, very easy to combine stitches together is what we're doing. So that's this icon right here with the A heart B. So if we touch that icon, this brings us into our program screen. Uh, the program screen right now is blank, so we need to go get some stitches to put into it. So we're gonna hit our stitch menu button. And it brought me into the last category I was in, which is fun stitches. So this is a good place to be. These are great stitches to put together. So we're gonna find, um, a couple ones that go together well. So maybe the house. So you see a little house. And maybe a tree. Yeah, that works. So now all we have to do is hit the foot control and we'll get our little house and tree.
So we have our little house and tree stitch. Nice. Okay, and below that we have Stitch Creator. Stitch Creator, I love Stitch Creator. It's a lot of fun. Um, you can spend a lot of time in here creating s stitches. This is something Faf has done for a long time. Back in the 80s, they came up with this idea of people creating their own stitches. And they used to have a box you plugged to your sewing machine and you used to plot out your stitches on graph paper. Uh, totally different now, much easier. You just do it right on the screen. Very simple, real great to work with. I've personally made some um, stitches that I'm proud of, that I like. Um, one's a hand looking stitch, which I really like. But how Stitch Creator works, it's simple. You touch this button here and you get a stitch on the screen. I can drag that stitch, angle it. Um, I can click it again, get another stitch, another stitch. If I wanted to um, maybe duplicate the stitch that I just got, um, I can just hit this button and it'll just duplicate the exact length of the stitch if I want it to in the direction that it was going in, um, however I want it to be. So I can sit there and make my own, my own stitches. One other thing that you can do in Stitch Creator is you can edit existing stitches which I'll show you that in a second. So um, this doesn't look like much. I'm just dragging some, some stitches around. Um, really is not not much of, of anything. But I'm just giving you the idea. If you're a person who um, maybe wants to sign their work, you can sit there and plot out your, your exact signature and the machine will sew it exactly how you want. And the beautiful, beautiful thing is you can just spend a lot of time and maybe work really hard and make your signature you can permanently save it into the machine as one of the stitches so that you can go back and do your signature whenever whenever you like. Uh, really is a, a nice feature. One other thing that I can do is I can scroll up and I can edit different points if I need to. Or let's say I wanted to triple stitch um, so I can highlight certain stitches and then I can hit triple which turns it into a triple stitch. Now, this isn't going to look like much of anything, but that's the stitch I just made. Another thing that we can do with Stitch Creator is that we can edit existing stitches in the machine. So right now we have a blank screen. So if we go to our Stitch Menu buttons, we can go find a stitch that we want to do. Um, let's pick this hard stitch here. And you'll see when it comes into Stitch Creator, it looks like it's plotted out. Each stitch is, is plotted out there. So then we can go and we can grab stitches and we can move them if we want to. Um, another thing that we can do is we can highlight sections of stitches. Um, so if you use the um, this little scroll up arrow, um, you can kind of jump around um, different stitches and you can kind of see how those stitches are are made, are done. Um, and if you highlight them, you can always delete certain stitches. You can hold the trash can button and you can delete everything if you want to. Um, but let's go back and grab those hearts again and see if we can um, edit this up a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and we're gonna remove this little middle part of the heart because we like the hearts, but we don't like that little section of the heart. So. I'm going to turn on my highlighter and I'm going to highlight just that section of stitches. And then I'm going to hit my trash can. See, took it out, it's gone. Um, and now it's maybe more to my liking. Or if I was doing a stitch and I felt like um, the stitch wasn't bold enough and I want to highlight and make a section of the stitches even more um, pronounced, I can highlight the stitching, which this is already a triple stitch, but if I wanted to make it even more of a triple stitch, I can just hit that button and then it makes it even bolder, does more stitching on top is what it does. Um, so that's, uh, that's Stitch Creator, a lot of fun. Uh, you can spend a lot of time playing in Stitch Creator to just make your own personal stitches. Well, let's do a little bit of alphabets now. So to do alphabets, we go to our stitch menu. We touch our alphabet tab, which has the big A on it. And we have a lot of different choices on alphabets. Um, let's pick the outline alphabet, it's kind of fun. So when we touch that, um, it comes up like a typewriter. Of course, earlier we were playing with the house and tree, so it remembers that and it's still on the screen. So I'm gonna hit my trash can button, which is gonna delete 
those. And now I just write my name or write whatever I want. I can write a whole sentence. I've got, um, you've got the ability to do uppercase, lowercase, numbers, which is hitting this little tab here. Certain fonts have only uppercase, um, where other fonts have uppercase and lowercase. This is an all uppercase font. So I wrote my name. And now what I want is I don't want it to be a border. Meaning if I don't do if I don't do anything and I hit my foot control right now, it is gonna do John as a border. It's gonna be John, 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 John. But what I want it to do is do John and stop and cut for me automatic. So I wrote John and I'm gonna hit my scissor button. And it puts a little cut command in there. So now it's easy. Easy, easy. I just hit um, hit my foot control, I hit the start button, and it's going to do it. It's not like in the past where you used to have machines that did names and there was a lot of steps involved. There used to be program, repeat, and all these different things you had to do. On the, the machines now, it is simple. You hit your alphabet tab, you write a name, and hit the foot control, and that's all you have to do. See that? Beautiful. Um, if you do spend a lot of time writing something, because you can write a whole sentence. It doesn't have to be just one small name. You can make a quilt label. You can say, made with love, by so-and-so. And if you made this custom label, you can just save it into the machine's memory and you can retrieve it anytime that you want, as much as you want. Now, another thing you can do is you can write a name and maybe you want to put a heart next to it. So you write a name and you go to your sewing stitches and you find your little menus that has your hearts or different fun things with it. Or let's say I wanted to do my name and, and put a little butterfly next to it. So there you go. I got John and I got a butterfly with it. So real, real easy to do alphabets. I'm gonna hold down my trash can button, which is gonna just clear out the whole entire screen. So let's play with maxi stitches now. Maxi stitches are a lot of fun. Really big, bold stitches where the fabric feeds around in all different directions. So again, we're gonna to go to our stitch menu button. And then we have our maxi stitch category here. Um, we have a few different, uh, different categories. So let's first go to the maxi monograms. And I just wanna show you um, what some of these big letters look like. So then we have our little A on the screen and I'm just gonna hit my start button. And you watch the fabric, you'll see it move in different directions. See that? that big monogram to A. So you have a lot of monogram alphabets in there. So let's find another um, fun, big stitch to play with. There's a lot. Um, I kind of like this one. This one's a lot of fun. It's just kind of this random, loose floral pattern. I always like the way this, this particular one turns out. And it takes a second for it to stitch. And again, on the screen you'll see um, where the foot selection is, the number eight. That tells us that we need to use our number eight uh, maxi stitch foot. And that's what I have on the machine right now. touch my scissor button because it's going to finish the pattern and then when it's done with this pattern it'll stop and cut for me. See that? Beautiful, huh? A lot of fun, these maxi stitches. 
So now I wanna show you a few of the needle art stitches. This machine has so many decorative stitches in it. You can spend all day stitching these out. Um, but I like the way that these needle art stitches look like. They're really big and bold and, and pretty stitches. So I'm gonna go to my stitch menu. Um, it's the antique hand embroidery stitches is, is the ones that I like. So let's do just a couple of these and you can see um, what I mean. So it, again, it's telling me to put on my two A foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch. The feet just pop off really quick and easy. There's my two A foot. And one thing I love about Foff is that when it does its decorative stitches, it sews really fast. It's not like um, some machines out there, and I sell multiple brands of machines, they do their decorative stitches so slow. Like you have all day it takes to do a little heart. Foff does their decorative stitches at a really fast pace. And it has a lot to do with their shuttle system. It's designed in a way that it maintains really high stitch quality even at faster speeds. So I don't know how well you can see that on film, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful antique hand looking stitches. Let's go play with one other one here. I like this one. If you ever are a person who does um, applique and maybe use that applique pin stitch, having the automatic foot feature with needle down, you can do your appliques more precise and 10 times faster than you were able to do before. Because every time you stop, the needle's gonna be down, it's gonna raise the foot, you can turn in the next direction, just hit the foot control and start going. Um, Appliqueing on this machine is like no other machine. It's incredible. Yeah, the machine just has beautiful, just beautiful stitches. So for you quilters out there, um, there is some built-in free motion stippling stitches. And then in, in a second, we'll get to do some actual um, free motion. So let's go to our, our stippling stitches here. Now we got a few different stippling stitches, but I'm gonna pick the real common looking stippling stitch. And you can use this stitch to kind of go around uh, different things if you just want to do a real quick little built-in stippling stitch. Let's see what some of these other ones. This is kind of some other crazy looking ones, but we'll just do the common one. Yeah, it's a little hand, um, little built-in stippling stitch there. Now, now that we're talking about stippling stitches, um, let's go ahead and go back to a regular straight stitch. And I will show you how the machine does stippling stitches, or not stippling stitches, but actual free motion quilting. It's really easy on this machine to do free motion quilting. So you have a free motion button right on the front of the machine, right here. If I touch this free motion button, it's gonna ask me what foot I wanna use. There's a few different foot choices. Um, you have the spring kind of free motion feet, and then you have one that's called the sensormatic free motion foot, which is a simple one, because it just pops on really quick and it just hovers right above the fabric. Um, so I'm gonna actually pick that one, Sensormatic Free Motion. Now you'll hear a thud when you turn that setting on because the feed teeth on this model drop automatically. So only thing I have to do to free motion is pop on this little free motion foot. I'm gonna grab some quilted fabric and that's it. The foot hovers above the fabric automatically. There's no resistance, no drag on the fabric at all with this foot. And you can just have at it. These machines free motion beautifully and really easy. You see that? That's the back side. That's the important side with stippling. Uh, backside is beautiful on this machine. None of those funny little pulls like you get on a lot of machines. Um, beautiful, beautiful free motion stitching. So free motion on the machine, really easy. Uh, we wanna turn off free motion, watch this. Uncheck, we're turned back on 
Feed teeth will come back up automatically the second we start sewing. Um, that is all you have to do to switch between regular your regular piecing work and free motion. Really, really fast and easy. Okay, let's do buttonholes now. Um, Faf does incredible buttonholes. Um, I would say, oh, 10 years ago, Faf was known as one of the best quilting machines, but their buttonholes were marginal at best. Um, their buttonholes today, these new Faf's, their buttonholes are great. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, they have this fancy little buttonhole tracker foot here. And what this does is it measures the length of the buttonhole and does a perfect buttonhole for you every single time. So the way that this foot works is we pop off our normal foot. We take our special buttonhole foot that comes with the machine and we attach it. Now you'll notice there's a little plug-in, looks like a headphone jack right here. There's a little spot to plug it in right by the LED lighting. And so we plug that into the machine and the machine now knows that we have that foot attached. And we just go grab one of our mini buttonhole stitches here, um, which is in our buttonhole category here. And we have a lot of different buttonholes to choose from, but I'm going to pick just a common buttonhole. So now on the buttonhole foot, there's a little arrow and a little um, notch. You always start with the arrow lined up with the notch and just hit the foot control or the start stop button. And what it's going to do is it's going to do um, a perfectly measured buttonhole for you. Now, you'll notice on the screen, the default is 16. That's a 16 millimeter buttonhole. Um, it'll repeat that 16 millimeter buttonhole as much as I want. If I need it to be a different size, see that? Beautiful. If I need it to be a different size, I can select whatever size um, buttonhole I want. You'll see it grow bigger on the screen to kind of show me what I'm gonna get on my fabric. If you have a button and you wanna hold it up, there's a little ruler at the top in millimeters. It'll tell you how big your button is in, in millimeters. You also have, you'll notice a little buttonhole symbol in the middle. If you want to change the density, how tight the buttonhole is or how loose you want it, um, you can just touch the little buttonhole and then you can play with the overall density of it. Um, but the buttonholes are great. Um, it'll repeat whatever size you have selected as many times as you want. And because the machine has fully automatic tension settings, it sets the tensions properly to do the best looking buttonhole. And you'll notice it locks and it cuts automatically. See that? Absolutely beautiful buttonholes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on the Foff Performance 5.0. Of course, there is a lot more to this machine. We could spend all day sewing on this one. A great model. Um, another thing I can tell you is the pricing on the machine is incredible. Um, it is in its price point. There is no other machine in the entire industry that can touch this machine. And trust me, I sell multiple brands of machines. This is by far the best in the industry as it stands today. So that's the Performance 5.0. I'd recommend uh, getting to your local dealer. If you want to sit down and play with it firsthand, you'll absolutely love this machine. If you want to get in contact with us, uh, villagesewing.com. Uh, we're located in Santa Rosa, California. Thank you.